Hi folks, it's Eli. So today we are talking about how to pick a boot camp. I have a little system for all of you. I think that's gonna be really helpful within this. So essentially it breaks down into an analytical piece and a soft skills piece or a, a soft traits piece of a boot camp. And we're gonna talk about what those things are and then break down what's gonna be the best boot camp for you. So first off, let's talk about the analytical side of things. So on the analytical side, I think the big three factors you wanna look at are the cost of the bootcamp you're gonna to go to, then you wanna look at what's the placement rate, essentially how easy is it gonna be for you to get a job coming out of that bootcamp, and then go straight from that into what is the average salary of the bootcamp. Those three pieces make up our analytical piece, and I think that's a really important starting place to have. On the soft skill side, I think you also wanna be thinking about, do they have an actual job placement piece of their curriculum, or is that just kind of an afterthought? And who is leading those that part of the program? Who is teaching their educational piece, their software skills piece, and what does their industry experience look like? Is it recent? Is it relevant to what you wanna go into? And then I think the third piece is how warm do they feel? Are they aware of your needs? Are they gonna be good people to work with? Do they care about you? Or are you gonna be a number for them? And I think that's a super important one that gets lost in a lot of these breakdowns. And so hopefully we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we'll also talk a little bit about what's the difference between a local versus remote versus national remote versus all the different types of boot camps that are out there and my personal philosophy on how you should be thinking about those trade-offs as well. Let's talk about the top of our analytical list, price. We need to think about boot camps as investments. They are retraining us into a new career path. And I don't think we're always trained very well to think about things like this in America because we, we are taught that you go to undergrad, you go to grad school, and then you get a good job, but that isn't always how it works for a lot of people. And so we don't always do that like ROI cost trade off when we look at education. But when you're transitioning careers, this is an expense that is big that you're paying in an attempt to transition into a better life for you and your loved ones and everybody else. So we need to look at price first and foremost. We need to assess what is the outcome versus the price. That said, price itself doesn't give us a ton of differences. Tech Elevator costs about six grand more than the next closest boot camp in Columbus when I was looking around, at least out of the ones I could find, but it was still 100% worth the extra money for the reasons we'll talk about later on in the video. The next tier in our analytical ladder is what is the placement rate of that bootcamp? I would argue out of all the things on the analytical side, this is probably the most important because you're probably gonna end up making more as a software engineer. So what really matters is how easy is it gonna be for you to get a job and what percentage of people don't get a job after going through that bootcamp. That said, at Tech Elevator, one of the things we talked about a lot as we transitioned into the job search was the people that didn't get jobs were the ones who stopped looking for the most part. The people that dropped off in the job search gave up on it, right? I've applied to over a hundred different software engineering jobs. It took me a long time. It took me three months to find a gig, but it did eventually happen. But you do need to be considerate of that. And what you really need to be mindful of is companies that won't tell you their placement rate and why that is. If they're new, maybe they have some justification they can explain to you. Maybe they haven't been, you know, they just they haven't been enough cohorts for the representative sample of what they expect their outcomes to be. They can talk to you about that. Maybe they can give you some behind the scenes numbers to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like, right? But if they won't give it to you at all, that's a really big red flag because why are they keeping those numbers from you? I'm sure they keep them. And if they aren't keeping them, that speaks even worse to them as a company than it would to be not telling you. Because if they aren't keeping them, then how are they measuring any of their outcomes for their students? Clearly they aren't tied to an outcome. They aren't an outcome driven organization for the people that are going through it, which is a person making an investment in that institution. I would really warn you against working with a company like that. And if they won't tell you, then they obviously have something to hide. And I think that's a question that you should be asking really carefully and clearly and often to them if you're really considering a bootcamp that won't tell you what their placement rate is. And just for, for the record, Tech Elevators Bootcamp, when I went through it was about 95%, it's currently about 90%. I haven't spoken to them. This is not a sponsored video. I don't have a direct line in the door about why that is, but 90% to me is still a very good placement rate. And it's something that I would kind of shoot for as a target if you're gonna be making as big of an investment as a lot of these bootcamps can be. The last piece is what is the average salary coming out of the bootcamp? And so that's how you're gonna calculate how long it's gonna take you to return your investment. For me, I saw about a 20, thousand dollar gap between my salary at thirty five thousand dollars a year and the average salary at tech elevator when i went through the boot camp at fifty five thousand dollars a year which meant that for a fifteen thousand dollar boot camp it was going to take me right in the span of a little less than a year to make extra essentially the offset on that and that's before taxes and that's kind of an, a rudimentary calculation if you're a finance whiz go ahead you know, teach all of us in the comments about what the better way to do that calculation is. But for me, that was kind of my basic arithmetic around that. 
And so those are our three big analytical pieces, and that's how we can look at kind of the numbers of a boot camp and start to assess outcomes based on that. I will say there is an extra piece in here, which is the income share agreement thing. That's a new thing th since I went through the boot camp. I did mention it in my last video about boot camps, which if you haven't seen, go ahead and check out. But I will say I think there is a real need for more clarity on this and I'm not the one to give it. I'm not a legal scholar. I'm not a finance expert. I don't know how these things work and I don't know how to tell you how to assess them. I'm going to try and find some content for you. And I'm going to put it in my description, the description of this video so that you can get a better assessment on how to evaluate different income share agreements because I'm not an expert and I would hate for somebody to end up in a situation where they feel like they've been fleeced by one of these agreements because it does feel like there is the possibility for some bad actors to enter that space if they haven't already. That said, so let's talk about some of the soft skill sides of things. So on the first side, we've got what Tech Elevator called the Pathway Program, which is essentially just the piece of the curriculum that is tied to getting you a job. Setting up your resume, setting up a LinkedIn profile, how to network, how to get to know people, how to go through behavioral interviews, all these different things in order to best ensure your odds of getting a new job in software engineering as quickly as possible because that downtime after a boot camp while you're applying for jobs is essentially lost money. It's opportunity cost, right? So we want to be really aware of that. And at Tech Elevator, what I loved about their pathway program was the people that were running it were people that had worked in tech in my area. So they were people that had worked in HR and hiring and recruiting roles over all different size of companies in the Columbus metropolitan area that were running those programs. And so they brought a couple things to the table. One of the big ones was their network. So they brought a lot of people in the door to talk to us about what it was like, how to think about the job search. They also brought those companies into our matchmaking events. So we got to talk to them. I got to interview with a couple of the biggest companies in the world through the matchmaking process built into my bootcamp with Tech Elevator because the Pathway program had such a strong network in the city that I was in. So essentially, how well connected are they to everybody else? And also just how well do they understand industry hiring trends? So they understand how it's going. Do they know how automated resume scanning systems work? Are they gonna be able to coach you through how to get through an automated resume scanning system? And a lot of things like that. And so I think that's a really important awareness to have of who is running those programs and do they have that curriculum in the first place? Then you want to be really clear about questions about who is teaching these classes. Do they have recent industry experience? I know a lot of people that have gone through computer science programs and have learned a lot of things that aren't really, you know, applicable to contemporary software engineering because we don't do a lot of the stuff we used to have to. A lot of it's handled by the higher level languages we write in now. And so maybe you want to go out and specialize in writing, you know, Fortran or C, but honestly, I'm not sure if a boot camp is the best way to transition into a career like that. You might need to go seek a higher education because that is a more specialized field and it is more in, in the kind of the weeds of software engineering than what a lot of us do, especially in the web development space like me. The third piece is how warm is the organization? And this is obviously the softest of the criteria. And I think it's also one of the most important. And one of my favorite anecdotes from Tech Elevator was there was a day where we went through the kind of the pillars of object-oriented programming, so being abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism in all one lecture, because you do kind of understand it, need to understand how they all work together, and you need to learn the others to understand what's going on. So they just kind of sprint you through it. And then what a lot of us didn't realize was on the calendar for that afternoon was a pathway session that was tied to imposter syndrome. And so essentially we all got to sit down, talk about what we were feeling, and then also hear from people that have been through the boot camp before and now are out in the industry and talking, hear them talk about what they felt like on this day, right? On this, this big breakpoint day for a lot of us where we covered a lot of the real meat and potatoes of the, the underlying theory of computer science. And I think that was a really significant moment for me because it was the moment where I recognized how much they really cared about us, how much they cared about our outcomes, about what we were experiencing, and not just our outcomes, but what we were experiencing while we go through the boot camp, how we felt and how they could support us so we could learn better by being more confident in the work we were doing. I think that is a really important thing. And so as you're interviewing and as you're talking to people at a boot camp you're potentially looking at taking, I really would encourage you to try and assess, do these people make me feel comfortable? Do they make me feel warm? Do I feel safe in these interactions with them? Do they seem aware of mental illness and mental health? And if they are, that is a big, big green flag for me at least about what is going on in that boot camp behind closed doors and how they can help you transition into software engineering. So within this consideration too, there is a little bit of a, of a back and forth on the online versus non-online boot camps. I have a biased opinion on this, obviously, because I went through a boot camp and I did mine fully remote. I went through it in May of 2020 to August of 2020. So there was no in-person. I still have not met the majority of people that I went through my cohort with in person because I then immediately moved to New York after I finished. I think you can get plenty 
out of a remote cohort of any boot camp if it's a good boot camp, if they have those educational outcomes, if they know what they're doing. That said, I do think there's a difference between a national remote and a local remote cohort. That is a thing to consider is so are your instructors based in your city? Do they have connections? Are people that are running the pathway program based nationally or do they have local connections in the city that you're looking for jobs in at the end of the cohort? I think those are really important considerations too. Mine was essentially like a local remote cohort where it was specific to Columbus. And so they had lots of connections. They knew lots of people. I got in the door with a couple companies in Columbus before I ultimately decided to move to New York. But I do think you can have great outcomes either way. And having not been through a national remote cohort, I would really encourage you to go find perspectives from people that have done that. I am not a solitary voice on the subject. There is tons of content out there and there's room for all of us. So go find other folks that you react well to, that you respond well to, see how they think about it. Because I do think there is a point of finding a really good national boot camp versus a kind of meh local one. I think there is an interesting trade-off in that as well. And definitely something that you should be considering too. Just to recap, we've got our big three analyticals, our price, we've got our placement rate and our average salary. And then on the other end, we've got do they have that job placement curriculum and who's running it? Who's teaching your coursework and is that coursework gonna be relevant? Are they gonna give you relevant skills to the modern software engineering industry? And then what is the warmth like? Do the people care about you? I loved my instructors going through Tech Elevator. They took good care of me. Look for this. It's important and it's gonna make a big difference to your outcome in general. And it's kind of a hard one to assess via website. So talk to people, go to informational sessions, set up meetings if you can, pay attention to it in an interview, but yeah, I think with those six kind of factors, you can do a pretty good job of assessing different boot camps. I hope this helps you all. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll talk to you soon.